Hello there, it's glad to have you join us on Business Nigeria. I am Mike Okwache, standing in for Tululukwe Ogunjobi. Now let's move into the stories for today and letting you know what's happening in the world of business. Now Nigeria's foreign reserves is now at $38.2 billion, hitting a 39-month high on the back of rising oil price and the success of the $3 billion euro bond auctioned by the government. Now, Central Bank of Nigeria's governor, uh, Godwin Emefiele, while commissioning Unilever uh, PLC 10,000 uh, 10, metric tons of blue band factory in Ogun State, he said the reserves has moved up steadily from $23 billion in October last year. The governor said the restriction of foreign exchange to the 41 items by the bank made the construction of the plant a reality. Nigeria eased out of recession last quarter with a GDP growth of 0.55%. Uh, the Senate Committee on Capital Market has backed the forensic investigation of Owando despite the suspension of the Director General of Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, Munir Guazo. Now, Chairman of the committee, uh, Senator Mustafa Bukar, uh, disclosed this to Senate correspondents in Abuja. That the DG or the SEC, as a regulator, has recommended that there should be a forensic audit of, of Owando. And this is something that is expected anyway. If there is already a recommendation to carry out a forensic audit, we believe that forensic audit, if it is necessary, when we review the report from SEC, it should be done. We should not stop anybody from carrying out the, I mean SEC from carrying out the investigation. Because if that is really what is needed to make sure that we restore confidence, of the market to the on the reg regulator because SEC is the regulator in the market. If that is essential and necessary, then we believe that that should be allowed to continue. Not that we don't want to do uh, an investigation. No, we have started listening to the DG on the allegation against him, and now this issue of uh, was joined because the issue of Ondo came out after the DG was suspended, and that's how we came to know that yes, there is an issue that connects with. Owando. And we have to find out what are the issues and make appropriate recommendations to both the House and the Senate at the end of the day. And the House of Representatives now considers former uh, Securities and Exchange Commission Director General Guazo's suspension a matter of public importance. Now, lawmakers are worried by allegations that Guazo was axed because he insisted on carrying out a forensic audit on Owando. And the motion was moved by House member uh, Diri Doye, who notes that there is need to investigate the allegations of interference by the Finance Ministry in the discharge of sex responsibilities. The matter of Owando disagreement brought it into the public domain. The House observes that there are allegations of interference by the Ministry of Finance in the discharge of the responsibility by SEC, particularly the Orlando Forensic Audit matter, which has largely and is largely responsible for the suspension of the Director General. Now, economic development may be defined as the development of economic wealth of countries or regions for the well-being of their inhabitants. It may also be said to be a suitable or sustainable uh, increase in living standards that implies increased per capita income. Now, better education and health as well as environmental protection. Now, technology is not independent of society, either in its shaping or its effects, and there is a great reliance on it to solve problems around the world today. Now, in the record of human experience, the engineering process interacts with every component of man's existence, namely physically, environmentally, educationally, even psychologically, socioeconomically, politically, and even spiritually, as some people may see it, in order to be fully relevant to human needs. Now, joining me now on the show to look at the role of engineering in economic development is the chairman of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, Apapa Branch. We have Garba Mekasua joining me now. Garba, it's good to have you join us now. I'm you're, pleased to be here. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Now, let me ask, first of all, uh, Engineering or science and technology is, is basically seen as the bane of any developed world 
right now that we make references to and say, okay, in other climes, in other climes. But in Nigeria, how is science and technology developing so far? What, 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 how would you assess the development of science and technology? Well, um, generally speaking, uh, the Nigerian education and Nigerian science and technology is actually evolving and is developing. Mm. What we need is for government continuous support so that we will be able to work more. Nigerians all over the world have worked so hard. They have so many inventions. And likewise in the country, as we speak, in our academics, they have made a lot of breakthrough. But the challenge we have is the support. We need continuous support of government so that science and technology can move up, especially engineering. There is no uh, human problems that engineering cannot solve. More so, we're in a time uh, more than ever before that the youth are clamoring for job. The rate of employment, unemployment is so high. I think it's around 16%. Then you see, how do you bridge the gap? So this, we need more invention. Government need to support science and technology, especially engineering. All right, well, when, you, when you say government should support, what area of support, if you have to narrow it down for us to, be, to the specific, so we can understand the kind of support you're talking about? Well, supporting uh, could mean that government need to invest more on engineering education mm. because this is a citadel where the country problems will be addressed, where you will encourage the university to relate with industry, where particular problems can be solved. You see, when you invest in research and development, that is a window. It's like kind of something that will help the nation grow. We cannot continue to depend on importation of every a thing we need, a consuming nation. Have you ever heard that a consuming nation or an, a nation that depends on importation will ever grow? Can a nation grow beyond its technology? It is difficult. And therefore, the need for support becomes very imperative at this moment. When we are just re, uh, coming out of recession, we need what is the state of our infrastructure? It is those kind of support that the engineer will be mobilized to help the nation move forward. All right. Now, the, we know that Nigerians are doing a lot when it comes to inventing or invention, as the case may be. But besides government intervention, because you're talking about support from government, yeah. government will tell you there is so much on their plate, there's so much for them to do. But how about collaboration between those who are inventing one way or the other, forming societies, forming guilds to, support, to help each other? Yes, you, uh, you are very right. Government is faced with a lot of challenges. But at the, at the same time, you look at what are those things that will quickly help your economy grow, that will quickly bring food employment to the people. And it is true invention. Yes, that one of the effort or what the NSC as a whole is doing, we are trying to see, okay, how can we support these people? Those who are doing well inventing, how do we support them? How do we bring them together and see how we can rally around and support them? Maybe through finances or getting those who can sponsor them. You see, no matter the kind of ideas or uh, invention that you have, when there is no support, it is difficult for you to execute it. But if those people come together, for instance, if we're talking about uh, 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 machine manufacturing, maybe grinding machine, for instance, okay. there are lots of people who have come fabricated grinding machines. If they come together, maybe if in clusters, maybe in, in Onicha, or, or those in Enugu, or those in Port Harcourt, or even in Benin, or in Benue, or in Lagos, as the case may be, wouldn't they, if they come together in their hundreds or in their thousands, wouldn't they form a guild enough to be able to pull resources together on yeah, their own? I, I think this is also another way to go, actually. Mm -hmm. But you know, we are evolving, and um, you know, in a business environment, there are a lot of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And then to gather these people together, 
I think it's a good direction. Mm. It's a step that they should take if they really want to uh, also help government so that uh, the invention will not just die down there. Yeah, but, but the Society of Engineers, wouldn't they also help to coordinate that kind of, of guilds or that kind of association or cooperative from the inventors? Yes, I think... Whether uh, they are members of the, members of the uh, society or not, as far as they are into science and technology. Yes, uh, the Nigerian Society of Engineers, you know, one of our cardinal objectives is to promote engineering, mm. is to look at where our talents, how can we harness them so that they can be better off. But even within the society, mm. we have challenges. You know, a, a, a society at times regulates itself, at times regulated by government. But as it is today, the Nigerian Society of Engineers is being regulated by government. And I think if we regulate ourselves, we'll be able to have more uh, chances uh, to gather and um, regulate ourselves in order to make engineering mm. more viable in our society. So I think it is good that the effort that the NSC is making right now is to see that we are able to chart that. Chartering means we should be able to regulate ourselves. Mm. Now, there are organizations or society that uh, are chartered and they regulate themselves. Their impact is small. So we feel if we are chartered as Nigerian site of engineers, we'll be able to have impact in all these areas that you have observed. Mm. And I think this is the right way to do it. All right. Now, that we know that the, in, in the private sector, there are so many investors out there sometimes looking for areas to invest their money. How about wooing private investors who have the capital to invest in or on any of those kind of inventions? I think these are the areas, uh, sincerely, that we need to work more on. Mm. Because, as, like I've told you before, you know, the uncertainty of business. The businessman that you are going to meet him, he wants to be very sure mm. that, look, if I put my money here, I should be able to sell To out. get returns. And then you and see the profit. challenge we have mm. is that even the local effort that Nigerians are making, People don't want to patronize them. Yeah. Even the little effort that you see some little production around the country, people prefer the imported product. Yeah. So all these factors are really hampering on investors coming to support. Yeah. All right. Now, they, they all often talk about the issue of comparative advantage. When it comes to comparative advantage of, of what Nigerians can, can, can take advantage of beyond as in, in comparative terms, what areas of inventions will Nigerians, or will Nigeria, Nigerians have an edge right now if government decides, okay, let me start patronizing made in Nigeria inventions? Well, uh, if uh, really, uh, I know the present government is encouraging um, the engineers actually, because recently uh, he agrees in the Federal Executive Council meeting mm -hmm. that the engineering professional and the firms, engineering firms, mm. should be registered so that government can be using them to meet the sociopolitical, I mean, development of the nation. Mm. So when you look at this, it's a very kind of uh, encouragement. If I know today that I will be supported or whatever I produce, uh, would be patronized by government. Why wouldn't many investors will come in? So as it stands, the area of textile industries, government need to work hard on it because it will help to um, employ so many youth. Even when you look at the EGR, the economy growth plan of the federal government, one of the area is um, it's talking about industrialization. So I think these areas, government can take advantage of it because engineering employ a lot of people because, for instance, when you do, we drill oil here, we take it out. Mm -hmm. You can imagine if you have two refinery in Nigeria today that is it refining. Will, it will make a you whole lot of difference. You can imagine the number of people mm. that it will employ All and right. also the other downstream sector 
that will benefit as a result. Okay, uh, Garba Mekaswa, we have to leave you here now. Our chairman, Nigeria Society of Engineers, Papa Branch. Thanks for coming. It's my pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Right. Thank you. We've been talking with the uh, chairman, Nigeria Society of Engineers, on the contribution of uh, science and technology to development. Now, after the break, TVC News business reporter will give update of today's proceeding at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Stay with us. Right, you're watching Business Nigeria, and we're looking at the business trends around. Now, we cross over to the stock market now. TVC News reporter Yusuf Akogun joins me now from the exchange. Hello, Yusuf. What's the update on the market today? Thank you, Mike, and welcome to the trading floor of the Nigeria Stock Exchange here in Marina. The market closed in the positive 33. It's been a bullish day today on the floor the market closed uh, by 1.51 percent that is nearly two percent uh it's been a very long time that we see this kind of performance performance in the markets but this since last week it's been a uh, the market has been positive it's been trading up in green so i have with me this afternoon a stock broker who traded on the floor charles Fakroka, to, to take us through how the how today proceeding went good afternoon mr Kruger. Thank you very much for having me. We are seeing a very positive performance from the market. What are the fundamentals at this time? Yes, well, you will recall that um, most of the companies have turned out their Q3 and it was quite good. So most investors are now trying to position themselves for end of year result. And that's why we are seeing a renewed interest in some of these equities and much demand for them. Their prices are going up. So we've, we've, we've seen lately new heights. Some of these companies have made new heights, mm -hmm. which tells you that, like you said earlier in your intro, the bulls are gradually taking over. Our encouragement will be investors should continue to invest in equities with good fundamentals. Mm, that is a very fantastic one. But there is something that I want us to address. There are quite a good number of Nigerians out there who doesn't know what it, what bulls or bears or red or green doesn't really mean. What can we educate these people? What to let them let us let them know what it means to invest on the capital yes. market? You also know that the our regulators, SEC and Nigeria Stock Exchange and Action, all these stakeholders and even the operators, one of our cardinal point is investors' education. Hmm. So we are saying investors need to be educated before they can invest in the capital market and know what they are investing in. So a lot of that is going on. I mean, this is also part of the program. I'm also here trying to tell investors that, look, the capital market is a viable option for you to deploy your funds. But they need to understand the basis and the fundamentals of investing in the capital Absolutely. market. Absolutely. What our advice is, get close to any stockbroker. You can get the lease from Nigeria Stock Exchange. You can just take a walk to Nigeria Stock Exchange and they will guide you as to how you get your stockbroker and your broker will now begin to advise you on what and what to invest. Then I believe that you have value for investing in the capital market. But what, when is the right time to invest? Is this when the market is performing very well or when it's not doing The right time to invest, invest depends on the objective of each investor. Your right time might be now. Another investor's right time might be next year. Mm when the companies are raising their results. Mm. So I'm saying, okay, no, I want to position myself. So it depends on the investment philosophy and objective of each investor. Mm. Let's look at the flow of uh, portfolio investment to the market. It's been on the rise lately. Is it a demonstration of or a return of confidence into our market? Yes, I will confidently say, though I stand to be corrected, for me, it's a renewed interest in the capital market as a result of what operators have been doing, regulators have been doing, a lot of enlightenment. We're even seeing some of the results of the enlightenment we have done. More and more investors are coming to the market. And of course, once they are very confident about the rules and regulation, that these people are operating in an ethical manner, following the rules according to IO school, mm. of course, investors' interest will be renewed. I will see more and more investors, both domestic and foreign, coming to them. And that's what we're experiencing now. 
No, let us briefly before we go, let's look at the Oando Security and Exchange Commission as today resumes. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, forensic, audit, forensic yes. auditing of that uh, stock of that company. Yes, um, if you ask me that question, fine. Regulators have their role to play in the market. If there are any infringement, they are there to see that if any company or any individual is culpable, of course, the rules are there, the penalties are there. So, Orlando undergoing forensic audit for me is is fine, it's okay. It's even going to show that the regulators are not the government itself, Federal Ministry of Finance, the operators, all stakeholders. We want to ensure that the market is transparent, is orderly and fair. So if any issuer or operator or any other stakeholder in the market is doing anything that will impact on the integrity of the market, of course, the rules and regulations should be applied and that issuer, operator or any stakeholder should be dealt with accordingly. And finally, before we go, there are so many companies quoted on the, on the, the Nigerian Stock Exchange. What do you think they should learn from what is happening to Oando right now? Of course, it's, it's very simple. Nigeria Stock Exchange, SEC, even operators, transparency, full disclosure. I'm sure that is what is the lesson most of the other issuers should learn from this Oando saga. We should all be transparent and always give timely and correct information to the market. Many thanks for your time, Mr. Charles Fakruga. Thank you. For That's the most we can take today. Well, that's the most we can take today from the Nigerian Stock Exchange. It's back to you in the studio for the rest of the program. All right. Thank you very much, Yusuf, for the updates in the, on the floor of the Stock Exchange. We look forward to uh, uh, positive markets going forward in the coming days. Now, with that, it's a wrap on Business Nigeria. Join us again tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Mike Okwache. Bye for now.